Right now we're on the pedestrian and bike path between Avery Park and downtown. And it, right here it's running along the side of what is Oregon 34 and US 20 combined right before they leave town. And this is a park, Pioneer Park, right along the bike path. And as you can see, the entrance to it is kind of a difficult turn off of the highway. And that, among other reasons, is why this is not a very busy park, as you can see, um, especially on a rainy day in January. Right here, we have the Mary's River which um, it's pretty full. I don't think it'll be too full that the uh, bike path will be flooded, but it is normally full for January. Um, and there on the other side, you can see the parking lot. That's another reason Pioneer Park maybe isn't so used is because it's right across from an easier to access park with more features, which is um, Avery Park. I have to say right now, this isn't the most appealing place. I'm having a pleasant enough day walking along the path. You know, it's like I said, rainy day in January, so this is close to my home. So, nice place to have a little walk. One thing I find a little bit ironic, about to make a kind of cheap point here, is, you know, the park is called Pioneer Park and it has in recent time been a big place for uh, tents and stuff, also RVs in the parking lot. And it's kind of ironic because, uh, you know, the pioneers, when they came here, they really disrupted things for the natural environment and for the indigenous people here. And there's a park to commemorate that. And yet when people try to settle here, such as it is, they've been chased out and stuff. And the situation is a little bit more complicated than that, but I do think it is a fair question to ask. You know, some forms of disruption of the environment and society are celebrated, some are not. Another thing to remember about the natural environment here is that the Mary's River probably naturally switched courses a lot, and now it's been channelized because there's roads and houses on either side. So if you look like something like that, it looks like they're trying to stabilize it because naturally this river is going to erode a lot and change its course. This is where we reach the tangle of highways. Um, I think this is where 34 and 22 are separating, but I can never remember what is what. And this is the bridge that goes to Southtown. When I say the water is high, but normally high this time of year, um, I think it was last year I came here and this path was covered with water. So that looks like it was 15 feet higher than it is now. So this is just normal high water for the Mary's River at this time. This is the meeting of the Willamette Mary's River and right now it's not easy to tell which one is which. And this way the path continues down to Riverfront Commemorative Park where we have been before. But I'm going to walk back this way and there's one more thing I want to see before I go home. So the one other thing I wanted to show, here we have a skate park. Um, usually it's a lot more busy. In fact, there are people here, but I'm not showing them. Um, but this is, uh, you know, Friday in January. Did I mention that part? And I don't know how long this park has been here. Um, but it's pretty popular and it's under the bridge like you know a lot of skate parks are in places like that I don't actually know a lot about the scene, but in case you were wondering yes Corvallis does have a skate park So I'm exiting what you know amounts to a little park complex or part of a larger park complex um, That path goes from downtown out to Philomath and we've seen parts of it before um, Goes through Starker Arts Park, etc. Uh, you know, so I've probably mentioned this a lot. January, rainy, not a lot of adventure ideas, but I hope you had fun watching this uh, quick walk around town.